to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. Julia, you win. First on board. Hi, Joyce. No notification. Of course not. Why would we have notification? Oh, somebody else says notification was spot on. <laughs> Yeah, there must have been some, because the numbers are jumping up more quickly than some mornings. Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Alrighty then. <clears throat> well, the plague continues to run through the family. Um, Brandon, his uh, RSV, the uh, respiratory syncytial V word um, <laughs> that he got from Bean has now turned into a sinus infection. No, the pancreatic diets in my book need uh, supplementation. Um, his turned into a sinus infection, so he finally was able to get some antibiotics and hopefully is feeling a little bit better. Uh, now Gwen is pretty down and out. Um, I don't know. I don't think she's been to the doctors yet, but she said she's hopped up on uh, Tylenol and Sudafed. I have a cold, low-grade cold. Um, and uh, Bean's other grandmother and grandfather came up to babysit over the weekend, and lo and behold, now she has RSV as well. So, <laughs> daycare germs. <clears throat> Anyway, so, nope, everybody's COVID negative, but, um, yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> so again, we apologize if emails are getting answered slowly, it's, it's sort of take, and, and our person who comes in to do fulfillment is now sick as well, so, uh, I actually, this, late this afternoon, have to go over and help them fulfill orders because we're short-staffed. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody feels terrible, um, but I've got the vet coming today because she ended up having to cancel last week because her child was home from daycare with RSV. <laughs> so it's just going around. Um, anyway, I wanted to talk about urate crystals and urate stones um, because I have been uh, we have been emailing back and forth with someone whose uh, dog was just diagnosed with urate stones and then I did a consultation for a client from New Jersey whose dog I had treated when I was up there um, and she the dog has pretty significant IBD and then also developed uh, urate crystals um, and these owners are great they're on top of things so um, they had they had come to me. We made an IBD diet that worked great for this dog. She did well. She's an English bulldog. She did really well. Then she started pumping out urate crystals in her urine and uh, had to go back to square one and get a whole new diet made because uh, it wasn't wasn't going to work um, with what we were doing. So uh, urate crystals are very urate stones. They're uncommon and they're very different from the. Uh, crystals and stones that we normally talk about. Uh, so struvite crystals, which are the um, uh, magnesium ammonium phosphate crystals uh, and stones, those are the ones that are secondary to a high pH in the urine and having repeated infections that either didn't get treated or weren't known about, um, or if the animal has something underlying that is predisposing them to recurrent infections. So struvite stones are actually pretty easy to treat. We just make sure that they don't have urinary tract infections and, and we keep the pH down. So that's pretty easy to do. 
Uh, oxalate stones are the opposite. They grow in a low pH urine. So with those guys, we have to increase the pH. Oxalate stones like to come back. Um, uh, when we got little Myra, she came with oxalate stones and I surgically removed them and uh, she died unfortunately only two years later from cancer, but she never had a recurrence of the oxalate stones. And interestingly, there was an article published um, while we had Myra uh, by in the ABMA journal that said oxalate stones 100% of the time will reoccur. No, they don't, no, they don't. We just fix the, the diet and we monitor the pH and we can keep them from coming back. Um, so then we've got these urate stones, which are rare. They're, they're a very small percentage of the stones that we see, unless you own a Dalmatian. So there is a genetic defect that will cause some dogs to make these stones. So basically, uh, something called purines, which are in uh, certain foods, are broken down uh, in the body uh, through the liver, and then they go through an enzymatic process that breaks the urates or the uric acid down into something called allantoin, and then that is uh, peed out through the kidneys. Well, some of these animals have either a genetic or one other reason why they are not breaking down the uric acid. And so the uric acid goes into the kidneys and goes into the urine because it doesn't get broken down. And then those uric acid crystals are very irritating and they can get together to form stones. And then the stones um, are difficult to dissolve and get rid of. So we want to catch this early on and we want to treat it early on. So my little English bulldog from uh, New Jersey, the English bulldogs are one of the breeds that can have the genetic defect that will make them have this urate problem. Um, the, the most common breeds that have the problem are Dalmatians. They make up 80% of the dogs with the genetic defect. Then we've got English bulldogs and Yorkies are on that list. Not as high on the list, but they are on the list. And then there's a uh, black Russian terrier or something like that that also could be genetically predisposed. You can get, if you have one of those breeds and you're not sure whether your dog, because you, you do need to modify the diet if you have a dog with this problem. Uh, similar to gout in humans. Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's still uric acid. Um, <clears throat> so you can have a DNA test done. Um, have your veterinarian draw blood and send it to the... Uh, University of California Davis Veterinary School Genetic Laboratory and they can test to see whether your dog is a carrier. If they're a carrier, it doesn't necessarily mean that they will have the problem, but at least you're aware of it so that you know to monitor for it and you monitor for it by having urine tests done. Um, so uh, it's more common in males than females, and usually you'll start to see the problem by three or four years of age, which is basically about when we started seeing it in this English bulldog. But I think it also had to do with the fact that we put her on a high meat diet because most of my diets that I formulate are high meat, and it worked great for her IBD. Solved that, no problem. She gained five pounds. <laughs> it looked beautiful right up until she started making urate crystals. Um, so... Unfortunately, a lot of these dogs get put on vegetarian diets uh, because vegetables are low in purines. Unfortunately, we know that vegetarian diets are not the best. Um... Oh, so Neely says she's waiting for a genetic test to come back from UC Davis. It's only $50 to do a saliva test there. Oh, saliva, great, perfect, not even blood. Um, so... Um, we, if we know we have this problem, we, we can make a better diet, but going all vegetarian for these guys is really not the way to go. So where are purines found? Purines are found in high quantities in beef, poultry, and fish, and really high quantities in organ meats like liver and kidney. So, you know, here I am, I formulate these diets. I love organ meats, and this is kind of what happened to my little girl in New Jersey. We formulated this great hypoallergenic diet. I think we uh, either did rabbit or pork or a combination. Of course, we put organ meats in there, and then six months later, here we go. We got urates in the, in the or urate crystals in the urine. Um, so it was sort of found just on routine monitoring testing, and we said, oh, got to change that up, and then uh, had the DNA testing done. Uh, it is low. Purines are low in most vegetables and dairy. 
Uh, so we can use something like a goat milk for these guys. That would work fine. Um, it's low in eggs. So a lot of these dogs, their protein ends up being eggs, which is fine. Um, and I found a list of other things that we should avoid in these dogs. Shellfish, sardines, cod, herring, haddock, because fish are high in purines. Organ meats, so they're very high in proteins, or in purines. Um, vitamin C, because vitamin C makes an acid urine, and these like to form in acid urine. So um, I actually have Gwen doing some uh, research on vitamin C supplementation for us. Um, but this is one time it, we like to use vitamin C to acidify the urine for dogs that have uh, struvite problems. We like to use vitamin C for arthritis. We like to use vitamin C for cancer. But if you have a dog who is prone to making urate crystals, you don't want to use it. Um, and then uh, also on the list was brewer's yeast, wheat germ, spinach, mushrooms. And remember, we use a lot of mushroom supplements, uh, asparagus, cauliflower, and soy. I don't use soy anyway. Uh, and if you're getting a diet made up, you want to make sure that they're not using soy as your protein. Um, so interestingly, besides genetic problems that cause this, the other time that we will see this is with a liver shunt. Um, when they have a liver shunt, basically the liver is this big organ that sits kind of right up under your rib cage. Everybody knows what a liver is. And the uh, blood from the intestines, the small and large bowel, stomach, everything dumps into a major blood vessel that goes to into the liver and then it filters out like a tree, all the little tree branches. And that's how the blood filters through the liver and is detoxified. So that's why we always say the liver is the organ of detoxification. If there's going to be, um, so that's why when we feed liver, we wanna to try to find the cleanest liver possible because any medications uh, or bad food that was given to, uh, fed to that animal, is, a lot of that gets stored in the liver. So for dogs who have a shunt, we've got this big artery coming in and instead of it branching out like a tree, it goes through like a hose and the blood doesn't get filtered. So we don't get the cleaning of the blood. We need that filtering process. So when we have a shunt, we also don't get the conversion of uric acid to allantoin. And so we can see urate crystals and urate stones in dogs who have a shunt. And that's one of the reasons that, um, oh, I have podcasts on cats and crystals. Marita, you just Google it. I have bunches. Um, so one of the reasons we see this a lot in Yorkies is because Yorkies are highly prone to liver shunts. I think I've seen more liver shunts in Yorkies and Maltese than, than any other dog breeds, um, very common. So we got an email from someone with a three-year-old chocolate lab. Now, if you think back, nowhere in this talk this morning have I talked about chocolate labs having problems with urates or DNA problems. So when we got the email from this person, uh, it went to Brandon and Brandon emailed me and I said, Brandon, this dog should not have urates. I think it actually has stones. So it's been going on for a while. I said, this dog should not have urates. There's only one reason this dog can have urates. It's got to have a liver shunt because it's not a breed where it's a genetic problem. And she wasn't even feeding a diet that, uh, so she wanted a new diet to, Stop, solve the problem. She wasn't feeding a diet that uh, should have made this dog have the urate stones. So I said, Brandon, tell her she's got to get testing for a liver shunt. This dog's got a liver shunt. We need an ultrasound and we need a bile acids test. And that's how you test for a liver shunt. She went back. So she, of course she Googled uh, liver shunt and she wrote back and said, my dog doesn't have any symptoms of a liver shunt. It's a three-year-old healthy, happy dog. And I said, I don't care. This dog's got a liver shunt. We got to work this up because we need to know if we're going to make a diet for this dog, what, what's causing the problem. So uh, she went, went to her vet and said, I need my dog tested for a liver shunt. And the vet said, no, you're crazy. And so she wrote back and said, my vet says, no, I'm crazy and he won't do it. And I said, well, I won't do a consultation unless we have the testing. So Brandon kept pushing and this poor woman uh, probably had to make herself crazy um, to find someone who would actually do the testing. 
And when they finally did the bile acids test, normal result is like somewhere between 10 and 20. Yeah, it was over 200. The dog has a liver shunt. Now, of course, Gwen and Brandon are sitting in the office looking at each other going, how does she do this? How does she, how does she pull this out of an email when the veterinarian that's treating this dog has not picked up on this, has not figured this out? Well, you just need to know why you would have uric, uric acid crystals. Why do you have urates? What, what makes them make them? If you, if you, this is not holistic. This is not weird science. This is having a traditional medicine understanding of why would you make uric acid crystals? What's not working correctly? Um, so when she finally got the test results, I said, okay, now, now we know what to do. Now we have a good idea. A Leonberger with cysteine stones. That's another weird one. Um, so, you know, sometimes you guys just, you have to push to get answers. Nobody wanted to do this testing for her because they're all looking at the dog standing in front of them going, no, this dog's perfectly normal. This dog doesn't have any, that's not his problem. No, this dog has had a problem for three years and just nobody knew it. Um, so, you know, we can solve it. We can get them on a diet that's, that's going, <laughs> that's crazy. They usually jump on that testing before the genetic test. Yeah, these, they, I, I don't even know where this person's from. Um, but I can't wait to get the vet records and see what we've got going on there and what the conversations were because a lot of veterinary practices are now, um, everything is digital and they're not using paper. So literally every email, every phone conversation, everything is recorded in there. Um, and it's really interesting sometimes when I see clients writing in with an email and saying, I'd like to have this testing done. And the vet's like, why would we want to do that? No, we're not going to do that. And literally... Folks, you're standing there with money in your hand saying, I want to get this test run. I don't get it. I don't understand why they're like, no, we're not going to do that. I mean, maybe it's just because they're so busy. Um, well, yeah, the vet got the findings because the, the, well, I don't know which vet did the test. Actually, I don't know if it was all the same one or if it was a different one. But uh, it just, it, it sort of flabbergasts me. It's like, okay, like to me, it was clear as day. It's like, Oh, we got urates. Chocolate lab. Yeah, they don't they don't have this problem. Like, okay. Let's look first. I, I mean, what's the worst that happens? You do a bile acids test, you spend I don't know what they charge for them. I, I have I have no clue. Hundred bucks. You spend a little bit of time and a little bit of money and you hopefully get an answer. But um all right, your 20-pound Blenheim Cavalier used to get UTIs and crystals. Give her four fresh frozen cranberries cut in half every single day with breakfast. Three plus years so far with no occurrences. That's not very many uh, cranberries, but that's awesome. <laughs> I know, never heard of a vet refusing task. You would not believe how many refuse. You would not believe. it. Well, the vet didn't want to do the testing for Gwen when she took her dad's cat in. Why would you want to do that? Let's just give it antibiotics. Oh, and uh, we have a, we're going to have a special guest on next week uh, talking about antibiotics. Uh, can't wait for that. And uh, don't forget, we've got the cat summit coming up. The lineup for that is darned amazing. Gwen did a great job on this one. Um, and that is going to be uh, Friday, September 24th. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, um, so the 24th to the 26th, we'll get ads up with it um, shortly. So, um, and supporters, I'm going to apologize because life is really crazy. Uh, we the fa the house should be finished sometime within the week. We're packing, we're moving, we're it's crazy, um, and I I really wanted to put together the next piece for you of the uh, reading lab results. Um, I may just pop on and do and ask me anything because um, <laughs> finding time to get a presentation put together. We got to go pick up Bo. She finally got her air conditioner fixed. Um, so we got a two hour drive today to go get her. Just a lot of craziness going on. Uh, so um, I haven't forgotten about you. I'll get to you. Okay, everybody have a wonderful day. Um, we finally got our paint problem solved at the farm. Uh, so this is crazy. For those of you who don't follow our farm page, which is fine in Dandy Acres. Um, the, Hugh talked to the painter because they finally showed up and the painter had, had gone on vacation. And before he left for vacation, so like a month ago, he ordered all the paint.
for our house and uh, paid for it. And then while he was on vacation, the folks at Sherwin-Williams sold all of the paint because they figured they could get more back in in time for him to have it to do our house this week. Uh, yeah, that didn't work out so well. They couldn't get it. Uh, he raised heck, um, and uh, he actually contacted like Sherwin Williams headquarters. Miraculously, paint has appeared. They're painting today. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Oops. Some sometimes you uh, you know the squeaky wheel gets the grease, and our bed that they couldn't find arrived yesterday. Our garage is so full of furniture; it's crazy. So yeah. Always fun. Today we have some concrete being poured. <laughs> Free paint? No, unfortunately. I would. I. It's a lot of paint. <laughs> oh lordy! Does all provide dog food cause kidney issue? No. No. My kidney dogs have eaten all provide for a long time. If your dog is in stage four, you probably need to dilute down the protein contractor nightmares. Our contractors have been really good. They're trying hard. Not their fault. All right, everybody have a great day.